Welcome back to Bazaar Morning Call. We have lots of stocks to talk about, so let's get straight to that very quickly. First up on our radar is Axis Bank. Abhishek is here to tell us how the numbers looked. Abhishek, morning. Morning, Sonia. So uh, the numbers look really good. Uh, they have beaten our poll in terms of PNL performance, as the loan growth is the best in last 29 quarters or even more. So positive from the result is that they are uh, one of the rare banks who have seen improvement in their net interest margin. Unlike ICICI Bank, we saw a decline of 25 basis point, and Kotak Bank, we saw a decline of 35 basis point. Axis Bank improved its net interest margin on a sequential basis. Deposit growth of 17.9 percent YUY is the best in last seven quarters, and loan growth of 22.8. 8% YUY is the best in last 7 uh, years or even more. So annualized slippage ratio is at 12 quarter low with the absolute figure of slippage at about 3,254 crore is the best in last uh, 12 quarters on the lower side. Asset quality they remain pristine. Gross NP ratio is the best in last 30 quarters on the lower side and again net NP ratio is at 33 quarter low. The only negative from the result is at the cost to income ratio that's at 5 quarter high of 50.24%. In terms of PNL performance both the NIA and Pat is a beat on our poll. Back to you. Thanks a lot for that, Abhishek. Uh, so that one uh, should uh, relatively outperform today. But Reema joins us to tell us about Tech Mahindra, whose numbers are quite disappointing. Reema? Tech Mahindra has reported a big revenue and margin miss. Revenues for the company have fallen for the second consecutive quarter, falling sharper than what the street was anticipating, down 2.4% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. The problem is communications, which is a third of the overall revenues, has seen a fall of nearly 5% sequentially. Discretionary spends in the telecom vertical are getting constrained. Reported margins are down to 4.7%. In fact, adjusted margins are down 410 basis points on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. You know, 4.7% margins are much, much lower than what peers are reporting. The company is prioritizing their business they have terminated certain low margin contracts. Uh, they're not focusing on areas which is challenged, and that's resulted in certain one offs affecting their margins and revenues. Deal wins are pretty healthy, uh, so that's picked up on a sequential basis. Remember, the street was waiting out to find out the big strategy overhaul under Mohit Joshi. He clarified that it's going to be revealed only in April in terms of the steps to improve the margins from here on. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting uh, one to watch out for. Uh, will markets be uh, sort of, you know, charitable and uh, look ahead with the new management in place? Will you can hear from the management and the earnings in a short while from now? Rima will be speaking with Mohit Joshi and Rohit Anand at 8:35 this morning. So that's coming up in just a bit from now. Well, uh, that's uh, tech M for you, but uh, Jubilant Food is the other one which reported numbers, and here also seems like the recovery uh, is not afoot yet. Perhaps a little more weight, Sonia. Absolutely. You know, it was a quarter that was weak on expected lines. So if you look at the core numbers, right, there was barely a single digit growth on the top line. Just about 4.5% growth is what Jubilant saw on the top line at about 13.44 crores. But the problem really is in the operational performance where they are struggling. The EBITDA was down about 10%. The margins are down 400 basis points compared to what they saw same time last year. And the net profits are down almost 40%. Now, let's not forget that Jubilant Foodworks has been a big underperformer in the last many months. The stock is down 11% in the last 12 months, but it is still quite expensive. It trades at 66 times FY25 PE. Let's take a look at, at what brokerages are saying. Goldman Sachs has a neutral. They have a target price of 515. They say, once again, it's a soft quarter from Jubilant Foodworks, but the demand is likely to be bottoming out. They say the revenue is in line and the management highlights that there are some green shoots. Morgan Stanley has an equal weight with a target price of 493. The uh, quarter is weak on expected lines, so there are no negative surprises this time around. But yes, a uh, muted quarter, so I'm going with red on that stock. Okay, all right, going with red on Jubilant Food. But let's go back to Rima. Rima, what about Sonata Software? Sonata Software has reported a pretty good set of numbers. When you look at the consolidated numbers, it's a mix of IT services, which is largely export-driven, international, and plus they do a sale of their domestic products business. So the combined numbers have reported an improvement in margins on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, 10.3% versus 8.8%. But the street focuses more on the IT services business as the international IT revenues, where the revenue growth has come in at 4.7%, and sequentially there is a margin improvement. For Indastars, it continues to be a very challenging period. In that, maybe the company has performed well, but in terms of numbers, um, you know, revenue growth just up 0.8%. Margins are slightly lower on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Their profits are down close to about 3.9%. And even the trade receivables uh, have gone up on a sequential basis, perhaps on account of concerns on Vodafone Idea. 
Okay, well, uh, <clears throat> that's uh, <clears throat> telecom in uh, focus. Well, let's talk about uh, Sona BLW. Uh, Sonia has got more. Sonia? Yes, in fact, uh, you know, Sona BLW will be speaking with the management as well in a while from now at about 9.30. So stay tuned for that. Very, very strong numbers coming in for Sona BLW precision. Now, the revenue growth, both in quarter two and in the first half of the year, have exceeded has exceeded 20%. Remember, they have a large presence in the electric vehicle space and they're getting a lot of momentum from there. Orders are coming in thick and fast. Look at the margin expansion, 300 basis points expansion in their margin, largely due to the positive impact of, a, of the uh, product mix. Uh, the company says that um, the light vehicle sales in the top three, uh, top three markets, which is North America, India and Europe, grew by 14% for them. And a lot of positive brokerage notes coming in as well this morning. Uh, CLSA has upgraded the stock to an outperform. They've raised their target price to 578. They've added, they say that the company has added new product lines and customers which will help them drive growth going ahead. Jefferies is a buy with a target price of 700. Sona BLW is actually a big proxy to this electric vehicle boom that we're seeing. And I reckon the stock could be in the green this morning. In the last one month, though, the stock has come off. It's down about 10 odd percent. Uh, so maybe there is some headroom on the upside as well. But Surbi is with us to talk about some more numbers that she's tracking. Surbi, morning. Good morning. So the first one on my radar is Chennai Petrochem. Now it was a good set of numbers. Sequentially, the numbers are good because of the refining segment, as they have done, uh, as due to the higher GRMs. Now the revenues are up 12% sequentially. EBITDA is up 90%. Margins at 11% versus 6% in the previous quarter, and net profit has nearly doubled at 11.91 crores. Next is Chalet Hotels. You know, a good set of numbers. Again, a good run for the hotel companies. Continue in Q2 as well. Revenue up 27% on a year-on-year -year basis and hospitality business and their annuity revenue both have grown in excess of 25%. EBITDA up 48%. Margins have jumped to 40% versus 34% and 35% levels in the previous quarter and same time last year. And PAT is up 2.2 times. And lastly, CMS Info revenue up 15%. EBITDA up 9%. Margins at 27% and net profit up 16%. So good numbers from CMS Info as well. Okay, thanks for that, Surbi. Well, uh, let's wind this down with Vivek, who's joining us to tell us about JSW uh, Infra. Morning, Vivek. Well, good morning. You know, the recently listed ports operational arm of the JSW Group, that is JSW Infra, is in focus. Uh, Economic Times has reported that the company is looking for an inorganic growth and is in talks with the SP Group, that is the Shapuji Palanji Group. And this is to go ahead and acquire the Gopalpur Ports. Uh, now, the valuation for this particular deal says that the enterprise value of this particular ports could be close to 3,000 crore, which includes the company's debt. Now, why would JSW Infra be interested in the Gopalpur Ports? Now, remember, JSW Group has significant operations as far as JSW Steel is concerned and Gopalpur Ports, you know, which is an all-weather port, actually has significant iron ore handling capacities. On the back of that, you know, JSW's current capacity has is around 158.4 million tons per annum, which could increase by close to 25 million tons per annum on the back of this particular acquisition. We reached out to the JSW group. At this point of time, they said that no comments, uh, but it will be an interesting development uh, to track as far as the entire port space is concerned. All right, thanks a lot for that. Well, here's a quick recap in case you missed out on any of these stocks. Stocks with positive news flow. There's Axis Bank, Sonata Software, Sona BLW Precision, Chennai Petro, Chalet Hotel, CMS Info Systems, and JSW Infra. While stocks with negative news flow, there's Tech Mahindra, Jubilant Foodworks, and Indus Towers. But let's also get a handle on what's happening in the world of commodities. There's actually lots that's taken place given the kind of escalation that we've seen in the geopolitical crisis with the Israel-Hamas war. Manisha Gupta joins in for a roundup of all the action from the commodity markets overnight. Manisha, the commentary that has come in, uh, especially from US President Joe Biden with respect to perhaps escalation of the uh, war in Gaza, uh, that has not, uh, you know, the crude market or the commodity markets have not taken that too well. Oh, absolutely. And we have seen some premium buying come in here. So the crude oil price has gained 2% overnight. Apart from the military conflict in the Middle East, it also is about the tight production that we've seen from OPEC. China is looking to widen its budget deficit as well. So this is a perfect recipe where you would see the commodity prices rise. That is, the tangible commodities continues to gain. So the crude prices are back at around $90 a barrel. And because of crude, you have rubber prices, which are now trading at a 14-month highs in the overnight markets there. Metals also have seen some 
some strength come in on the back of China's stimulus announcements. And the U.S. Treasury yields now trading below 5, below 4.9% as well. That has been supportive. So whether it's about copper, iron ore, we've seen great price gains. The safe haven buying in gold is back again as well. We are inches away from that $2,000 per ounce mark. So every sector that you see, whether it's energy, industrial metals or precious metals, we are trading in the positive in Asia today. Okay, thanks a lot for that, Manisha.